Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Today I am bringing you my Invoked Ligma deck profile for the September 2020 format. Uh, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. We do these deck profiles as and when we can. Unfortunately, we're having to do with a little bit of a set up at the moment because, well... Uh, I'm getting ready to move house and uh, everything's kind of up in the air. So this is a bit of a weird setup for me. So apologies if this is not what you're used to. And also apologies if there's any weird noises in the background. Over in the world's noisiest house and nothing much has changed there. But anyway, I digress. Let's get back to it. So again, if this is the kind of content you're here for, you should definitely hit subscribe so you can see more of this in the future. We also do Euro Market Watches every Monday, uh, as well as a variety of content for the rest of the week. So thank you very much for checking in. Uh, I have been holding on to this for a little while because I wanted to wait and see what would happen with the September format and it has changed the way the deck is being run significantly so we'll talk through all of those details just now uh, so we're not going to get messing around much longer we'll get stuck right into the video for you so we start off with three copies of Alistair. Um, I think this is fairly self-explanatory, right? Um, it's got an invoked engine. Uh, it's really small. It works really well. Uh, the unfortunate thing with this is that it now gets hand-trapped to fuck. I mean, it did before, but of course we had called by the grave to save us. And uh, I won't get into the details of why I think that's a load of bollocks that they got rid of that, but there you go. Uh, so we have no call by the grave. So this guy gets hit a hell of a lot more. Unfortunately, there's not much you can really do about it you kind of have to just suck it up there could be some argument for playing a third invocation which i'll get into later to make this a little bit more viable but we'll go down that route shortly so yeah just triple alistair to start us off so we're just moving on to our dogmatica package uh or ligma as i prefer to call it because they couldn't make up their fucking minds it was dragma dogmatica all that shit so we've got triple copies of ecclesia i think this is pretty much mandatory for anyone who intends to play this engine uh, this is the most important monster out of the lot, and it's, you know, it kind of goes without saying that we play it as a three of. It searches, it sets up all your plays. A lot of the time, this is how you're going to finish up your board is by summoning this and going through that whole uh, charade, let's say. Uh, we also have two copies of Fleur de Lis. Uh, I really like this at two. Sometimes I wish I played a third. Sometimes I wish I played other Dogmatica targets. Unfortunately, this is all we're going for. Uh, I don't think Maximus is strong enough, and a lot of people are uh, having options in the extra deck to deal with it on the off chance that someone uses it. It works really well against the combo decks because they don't really have any space but i think on the whole uh, it's not really good enough to be played in the main something you could consider for the side if you're inclined that way personally not interested uh, and that makes up our dogmatica package in terms of monsters and then this is one of the big changes that i'm going into for the new format so something that I kind of toyed with, I wasn't really sure what to do, whether I set up a bigger, better going first board and try and stun a little bit more, maybe play additional copies of Punishment and that kind of thing. Uh, but on talking with my teammates, uh, shout out to Hemman in particular who kind of suggested this. The aim really should be just to go with more hand traps. Uh, the deck has a, a lot of flex spots, so that is one of the good things about this. Uh, so we are just maxing out on hand traps to try and punish uh, Infernoble and Dragon Link in particular because they are our two biggest uh, issues. And you can win against them, but you have to obviously see the right cards in your hand, especially when you're going second. So we start off with two copies of Nibiru. Um, <sighs> It works really well. I've been lucky in that I've opened this most games, to be quite honest with you. Unfortunately, in some of them, I've also opened two of them, but there you go. Uh, that's the old mathematical bias for you. But uh, I think two copies is absolutely fine. Um, a third would be nice, but again, I'm using the extra spaces for different interrupts because, uh, well, I just think the variety is a little bit better to go with. And of course, opening multiples is a problem. You see the OCG will play it a lot of the time this way as well. So with our other hand traps we move on to, uh, we've got Triple Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Uh, again, arguably the strongest hand trap and still is the case. Uh, works against pretty much every deck. In particular, rogue decks really just lose hard to this. So I think it's a necessity to have as a three of. We've got triple copies of Ghost Ogre. Now, obviously this got popularized recently with uh, Numeron and that kind of thing. For me personally, I think this is still really, really strong hitting the Halka Fibrax. Hitting uh, Isolde, if you can, with this kind of thing, is just really, really strong. It stops a lot of plays, especially less seasoned players who don't really know how to get through their plays. It has its benefits in that sense. It's an easy side out as well. If it's not working well for you, there are other options you can go with. 
We've got two copies of Vela, unfortunately, mixed rarity. Shout out to Jam Jam Card UK for cucking me with this. Uh, they'd give, they gave me a Dusa one yesterday, and I swapped it out for a common because fuck Dusa, it's an awful set. But let's not get into that. Two copies of Vela works absolutely fine. Uh, again, a bit of a flex spot in that you can play other hand traps. I like having the variety available to me. Uh, and then we have two copies of Ghost Bell. This is something that I wanted to try out for this format. It's worked okay so far when it's come up. Uh, a lot of decks are used in the graveyard, and I think that this is one that's definitely being overlooked. Uh, I don't know whether this would be viable as a three of, because the format hasn't really developed just yet. But I think as a two of, it works absolutely nice. If you see it in your hand, it's great. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. Uh, and again, just as a two of, it seems quite nice to have the option to get into it. And then we round off our monsters with our two engine requirements, uh, Dark Magician and Red Eyes. Of course, we're playing the Dragoon package, uh, so you need to have these in there. Unfortunate. However, the one advantage we do have in this deck is that we have a way to make uh, Dragoon without having to use the Red Eyes fusion. So as a worst case scenario, and this has come up, you'll see in my Locals vlogs, where I've opened both of these. You've got other ways to play, and Invocation allows you to do that. Next up, we move on to our spell lineup. So we've got triple copies of Magical Meltdown. Uh, again, I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, we're playing the Invoked Engine. It makes no sense to have any less than three of this. This is one that everyone kind of thought might get hit on the list that's in some description, maybe to one or something like that. It's still here, so we're still going to max out on them uh, for as long as we possibly can. We have one copy of Terraforming because we actually play one other field spell in this deck. And I'll get into detail about this. People are going to fucking hate this. One copy of Mystic Mine. Uh, this is something I was trying out last format. Uh, it's one of those things where if you play against combo decks and they don't have a natural out to it, which a lot of them don't. Now that has increased a little bit, I will say, with Harpy's Feather Duster, but we'll get into that later on. Uh, I think sometimes this just wins you game ones on its own. Uh, if you get, there's been games where I've had absolutely nothing, uh, and I've top decked this, and I play this, and my opponent doesn't have an out, and I win the game. Um, and people don't like this kind of card. People hate it. In fact, it's a floodgate and all of that, and they, you know they're controversial and infamous and all of that goodness. But I'm not one to begrudge playing a card that's going to win me games when I have no right to win them because that is how you do well at events. Um, you you can't win by trying to play the moral game. Uh, and if this is going to enable me to win some free games, then fucking right, I'm going to play it. Uh, and you should definitely be playing it too. And it's an easy side out as well if you don't want to play it. like, Or if it's not viable, then you can just get rid of it. We're playing one copy of Red Eyes Fusion. Again, it's a requirement really to go into Dragoon. You can play Invocation just on its own, but that's obviously not as reliable. We want to get into this as quickly as possible, ideally. Or we want to have access to it whenever we need it, and this just allows us to get there. We have two copies of Invocation for the Invoked Package. Um, again, I kind of wanted to play three, but didn't really have the space with everything else I'm playing. You could maybe substitute Hand Trap uh, or two for this, uh, just to get an extra copy in there and then maybe play something else. I don't know. Uh, but Invocation of two seems okay. Again, I would like to test with the third and see how I get on with that. Um... I th Before, two was definitely correct, because I never wanted to open it, but now that Alice had just has no real protection. A third is probably something you should consider playing, uh, but that's entirely up to you. I'm not sold on it just yet, but I think a third may be correct. We have three copies of Droplets. Um, so this is something that is just absolutely insane. Uh, there's been games where this has won me, like, for example, last night at Locals, I was playing against one of the Tuggers. Um, I won in time, and this was the card that got me over the over the edge. Um he was rushing to obviously get into something to beat over. He gets into Coral Dragon uh, to go and attack into my Ecclesia. And this will, of course, half it and, and end that battle phase. So it does have it, its kind of benefits outside of that. Uh, this card's just really, really strong. Anyone who plays it knows how good this is. And, of course, it's a really good way to deal with Dragoon if your opponent has access to it. And we're running triple copies of Nadir's Servant. Uh, this is mandatory, I believe, in any, any Ligma deck. Um, <laughs> you need to play it as a three of. It's absolutely insane. It does so many good things for you. Uh, I think you'd be insane not to be playing this at three. Um, it's also good in the fact that it doesn't have the restriction that Punishment has, in that if you want to get something into the grave to go down your further plays, this doesn't rely on your opponent having a monster that can do um, or have a, uh, you know, a similar attack or... Uh, you know, the whole restriction with punishment. I'm getting my tongue tied there. Uh, but you get the point. It can dump anything at any time, which is just nice. 
And then we round up with our traps. So we have triple copies of Impermanence, another hand trap in the deck. Uh, but also good if you go first because you can just set it. Uh, you can bluff people as well because if they know you're playing it, you can set other cards in the middle column. And a lot of the time they'll just assume that it's an Impermanence and try and play around it a little bit. Sometimes you can set it in other zones if they've got less zones to play with and they'll just assume that it's not an Impermanence and you can just yeet them with it. Uh, and of course, it's really, really important against combo decks going second. It gives you like, the options. It's just good going first or second. And our last card for the main deck, we have one copy of Dogmatica Punishment. Uh, this card's absolutely wild. I really just want to play more copies. Unfortunately, again, that would mean sacrificing other cards that are slightly more important. This is something, though, that if you feel you've got the space, I would definitely get another copy in there, potentially even side it. Uh, this is, again, a good way to just out problematic cards. Um, it sets up your grave depending on what variant you're playing. It's just really, really strong. Even the switch off of the extra deck doesn't really matter in this, to be quite honest with you. A lot of the time, you're going to set up your board and then you set this, uh, and then you stop your opponent playing, and that, that's that's all that really matters with it. It's just an insane card. Uh, so next up, we go on to the extra deck, uh, token field center, whatever, the usual garbage. Get that out of the way. Um, okay, so we have our Alistair Link targets. Uh, this is obviously to get us nice and easily into those invoked fusions. Uh, you already know the deal. You link into this, and then you link into this, and you've got access to Purgatrio. Or Mechaba, usually Mechaba you're going to start off with, but of course, if your opponent set up a bunch of monsters that don't really have a lot of protection, this is going to get you into Purga Trio. We have one copy of Vert Anaconda and one Dragoon. Uh, I, again, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, some people might not opt to run this. I think it's just really, really strong. I think, sure, for the bricks it is... Um, there's some argument against it. I think in like higher end combo decks and stuff, this just isn't necessary. But in a deck like this, where you're only you're consistently ending on one or two interrupts for the most part, just having access to another option to go into is just a really really solid thing to to sort of have access to. And a lot of the time, you can stop your opponent playing, and the next time you go into this, make this, and then you win the game anyway. So uh, it's a really really strong card. We already know that it's warped the format, and I don't think if you've got the option to run it without sort of neglecting other strategies. Uh, if you choose not to run it, that's kind of wild to me. Super Poly targets. We're running three copies of Super Poly in the side. We'll get to that in a moment, of course, when we cover the side deck. Uh, so I wanted a bit of diversity in here. You could opt to play multiple copies of this because this is really the only one that comes up. This is just for the off chance you come up against other decks where you can do it. Uh, Infernoble, if they're not running a warrior or something like that, gives you another option. Um, Dragon Link obviously plays some stuff that isn't necessarily dragons that this can help you get into as well. Uh, maybe if you've exhausted this. And then this is just for if you really want to blow your opponent out. And of course, it helps you get into your other fusion spells and that kind of thing as well. Uh, again, it's just another option. You could run more copies of this. You could run the other Predator Plan, uh, Dragostopelia. Um, I just think this is a good little balanced option to go with. And we have the space in the extra deck now that we've got the Shadol package, which, if any of you are wondering, uh, the whole logic with this was um, Shadol, Ruck, uh, what do they call it in, in the TCG? Schism. Uh, just wasn't coming up an awful lot. Uh, it was only ever good if you really opened it or have have access to it and a lot of the time you were going out of your way to say dump an Alistair from your hand into the grave to boost the monster's attack just to get into Winder um, it felt like a bit of a waste of resources it felt like it was a little bit convoluted and I've cut it and I haven't missed it at all so shout out to the guys on uh, well the Tuggers who have been playing without it and sort of advised me to cut it I've done so and haven't missed it at all and the advantages is given us loads of extra deck spots that are way more powerful in this format in my opinion for our invoked extra deck cards, we've got two copies of Mechaba, one Purgatrio, and one Orgo Aedes. Um, so this is one that comes up occasionally. There's been times where I've had access to fusions and, uh, you know, the, being able to pop a card and have removal is really, really nice. Um, or maybe these weren't good. Maybe you use the effect of this and you want to get rid of it. This was another way to do it. It's good in mirrors and that kind of thing as well, which is kind of nice. Uh, Purgatrio, obviously just for blowing out the opponent. And this is what you're normally going to go into uh, off your turn one is going to be Mechaba. Still really, really strong. Still really easy to get into. Really consistent that you're going to end on this. Plus another interrupt is kind of the standard board. Um, again, just being able to expand it by that extra slot as well by omitting the Shadows has felt really nice. And I haven't regretted the change so far. And then we move on to our Ligma targets. We'll just say that because obviously you've got multiple ways of dumping all of these. Um, Omega comes up very, very infrequently, but there are times where it can be handy. Entis, we already know, just gives you um, an extra pop, which is just really, really nice. Titanic Ladder put in here because you never actually fusion summon it. Um, there's just no point. It doesn't really do anything. You just want it in the grave to search. 
during the end phase. This has become a little bit like scum in the fact that I will just always forget to activate this in the end phase. So I'm trying to uh, remind myself to go through all of the phases so that I don't forget this. So please remember to activate this during the end phase. But that does round off our extra deck. And again, these can be changed for whatever you like, although I think this is the best lineup. There are some alternatives you can run instead of this, maybe an extra copy of this. That's entirely up to you. And then we're going to round off the video by going into the side deck. So this is obviously still a work in progress. We are very much just kind of... Uh, looking at what's available and looking at what seems to work. Um, so I'm going with triple copies of Artifact Lancia. I think this is really, really strong, this format. And I think it's definitely being overlooked at the moment. I haven't seen many people picking up on this. Um, but this is insanely strong at the moment against, well, all of the combo decks, quite frankly. It's good against people who are going to be playing Orcus. It's good against people who are going to be trying out PK Fire. Uh, I just think it's got really good application. It's good against the Mirror Match. It's just, it's a really strong overall hand trap and one that I absolutely think people should be playing in their side. So if you're not already, definitely consider running this card. We are running loads of outs to combo decks because this is our main problem is when we're forced to go second. We don't really have a way to play. So you're going to see a lot of options coming up for that now. So we've got two more copies of Mystic Mind. Again, absolutely unashamed to say I will happily, happily ruin someone's day. Uh, I'm going to sit and watch some combo for 15 minutes, see the smug lock on their face and then play this and then they scoop. Um... Again, you know, people will, will argue that it's scummy, but I'm one of those people that firmly believes I don't think it's any worse than sitting there making your opponent watch you for 15 minutes, go through all of your hoops and combos to be unable to play the game. Well, fuck you. I'm going to make sure you can't play the game either. So Mystic Mine are two more. Uh, this originally was just a one copy in the main, and I've come to love it now. Uh, shout out to him for turning me into a degenerate little fuck. Um... Yeah, three copies of Mystic Mine access through between the main deck and the side deck. Absolutely, my opinion, worth running. We're running triple copies of Dark Ruler No More. Again, just another card to blow out going second. Uh, if you can't play through their board naturally, this will help you get over the line. And of course, it stops things like Borrowload, Savage, and Herald, and that kind of stuff from negating it, which is always quite nice. More combo dealers. Super poly. Really, really strong this format. Uh, not quite as strong against Infernoble, but it depends when they end on their board. Uh, sometimes they leave up two darks, and that has happened a few times, uh, and this will just help deal with that. And of course, against Dragon Link, it's pretty much an auto win. They can't really deal with it. Triple copies of Lightning Storm. Again, if we're forced to go second, we want a way to play. This will help blow out the opponent. Uh, there aren't so many back row decks doing the rounds. In fact, we'll just throw this in here as well. Harpies Feather Duster, of course, fresh off the list. It's questionable as to whether this is still needed anymore. Um... <sighs> I think a lot of people aren't even going to play this in the side deck anymore, you know. I think people will experiment with it and it'll go the way of Regeki and disappear. Uh, after talking with my guys, I think that that is pretty much how this works. Although I think it's good to have in the side if you've got the option. Um, and of course, sometimes these aren't usable if you draw them later in the game, whereas this is. Uh, this is one of the games already after one locals, so... Make of that what you will. Uh, again, just another back row blowout card. I don't think there's going to be too many back row decks at the moment, but it just gives you insurance policy if any of them do come up and give you something to play against. But that does write enough the deck profile for us today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and hopefully you like some of my reasoning behind this. Again, apologies about the weird setup. Uh, hopefully it was all clear enough despite the fact that it's annoying bit of light and I couldn't really do anything about here. Um, but hopefully this has been a good profile for you, giving you some ideas, some food for thought of what you could try out. Thanks again for checking in, guys. Big shout out to the guys over at Jam Jam Cards UK who sponsored the channel. They hooked me up with all my cards. There's a link in the description if you want a cheeky little discount off what they do. In fact, we can even hook you up with signed cards if you're into that. Not to blow my own trumpet. It, but of course I know there's people out there who are regular watchers of the channel who might want that if you buy a card from them we can more than happily get that signed for you uh, of course may be unplayable so just keep that in mind before we go ahead with that but thanks again for checking in guys if you haven't already you should most definitely hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one this content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK you can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description